Welcome back. It is still news up. We will be looking at the front pages of our national dailies right about now with Tiava Bibaruna on the other side with us uh, this morning. Let's quickly begin with the Nigerian Tribune newspaper. Uh, major headline here is still around um, NLC and the strike. It says, um, after meeting with the NSA, uh, Labour suspends the strike. Uh, FG regrets attack on NLC president, says investigation in process, arrest, uh, arrest made. All right, big stories here. OAU lecturer slums dies in his office. Six billion dollar partnership with AFCTA to transform trade across Africa. On two killed, 1,000 houses burnt as fire engulfs IDP camp in Boronu. Minority leader, PDP senators settle for North Central and uh, one party state, PDP APC Beaker. New River CP orders uh, arrest of notorious cultists, two Baba and other criminals. Uh, of course, this is not um, two faced. This is not the two Baba that we all know as two faced here. This is one, one cultist or maybe a criminal in uh, River State. Let's go above the big story there. Why 177 Nigerian passengers uh, visas were cancelled by Saudi Embassy? Get that story on page 16. Appeal Court confirms so will lose re-election and ex-finance minister uh, Ono Lakbo Suleye dies at 90. We have a few more stories above the masthead. Inflation rate jumps to 27.33% as food cost rises by 31.52%. And finally here, at Editor's Conference, Tinubu restates commitment to economic growth. And then the NGE is uh, saying, uh, and the NGE president makes them editors, uh, okay, tax editors on uh, promoting citizen uh, uh, success to information. Okay, these are the biggest stories on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune. And the next up will be the Business Day newspaper. Uh, Business Day is kicking off with um, the new inflation figures. It said bread, fish, prices, stock inflation to 18-year high. Um, rate hikes, reforms, uh, bearing fruit, says the CBN. Okay, we are waiting to see the fruits that um, the reforms are bearing. All right, um, beside that big story there, oil firms pay less penalty for gas flared. Big concern. Epis, Saudi, Saudi saga sparks calls for equal treatment. All right, um, this one the below the picture there, consumer goods uh, firms stay afloat as earning slump. Big stories on the front page of the Business Day uh, newspaper. Uh, we now look at the Daily Independent, uh, uh, which is also continuing with the inflation figures. It says inflation hits 27.33%. Analysts fear food inflation may spike as yield tighter uh, beckons. Uh, rate uh, narrow appreciation, only way out of high inflation. That's coming from an analyst. Our tightening measures responsible for sharp decline. That's coming from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Uh, more stories here. Uh, we have that of the, out of the editor's conference. Uh, we've seen that before. Now, NIMED forecast dust haze in the next 24 hours warns people with health issues. Okay, the Amatan is almost here right now. Um, if you have health concerns, uh, you need to be more careful. NLCTUC suspends two-day-old strike. We've seen that in a few papers this morning. Customs intercept 3.55 billion Naira Tramadol at Moritala Mohammed International Airport, nets uh, 74.2 billion Naira revenue. And SEC to make capital market attractive to fintech and youths. That's coming from the, uh, from the boss at uh, the Security and Exchange Commission. Uh, some of the stories here. Okay, that of um, why we deported 177 Nigerians from Jeddah, Saudi Arabia Embassy speaks there. So get a copy for a proper understanding of what uh, went down uh, on the front page here. This one says, uh, above the masthead, Nigeria sliding into totalitarianism, anarchy, uh, PDP uh, 
raises the alarm. Okay, and many other stories there. Grab a copy of the Daily Independent for details and other stories. Our next up will be the National Newspaper. Um, it says reforms comes with pains, but inevitable, says federal government. Reform, reform, reforms come with pains, uh, but inevitable, says federal government. There will be transparency in budgeting, expenditure, uh, president, uh, job creation is a priority. Okay, it's all about the president this morning on the front page of the nation newspaper. Uh, let's go above the masthead. What do we have here? Um, Ward to Shaibu, run for governor. Okay, uh, government's efforts okay to halt uh, scary soaring, soaring inflation. That must be from the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Now, Senate moves to create a federal data bank. Former Finance Minister Arnold Lakba Shulaya dies at 90. Uh, we have a story on Labour having calling of strike after a meeting with uh, the NSA. Um, fantastic story there. And then the Saudi Embassy explaining what uh, transpired in the last uh, few hours and many other stories on the front page of the Nation newspaper. And for the Daily Trust newspaper, it is a sad one here coming from Bruno ID, IDP camp, where two children, two children killed as fire raises 1,113 houses at uh, Bruno IDP camp. Wow. So where do they go from here? Where do they go from here? Big story, I must say, this morning. Um, just below the masthead, after grounding FCT state for two days, labor suspends a strike. Israel wants to turn Gaza on livable city. Palestinian envoy is uh, speaking here. Why we deported Nigerian passengers? Saudi authorities are also speaking here. And then inflation hits 27.3 percent as cost of food others rise. Um, Nigeria loses 1.3 trillion naira on waivers concessions. That's coming from customs loses 1.3 trillion naira on waivers and concessions. You want to ask to maybe grab a copy of the paper. You maybe, maybe you might get information on, on that. Now, minority leadership, PDP senator settled for North Central. All right, let's look at this one. Then we can now some, look at the stories with Abib, the punch. The punch, uh, this paper is about the strike, labor suspense strike, OPS which is the organized private sector, stakeholders, tackle NLC and TUC. Let's look at a few, a few riders there. A strike over Jero assault abuse of power, says LCCI, maritime sector loses 20 billion naira. Labor threatens to resume strike, insist on demands, says uh, suspension temporary. Okay, suspension temporary. Um, Look at the, the story above the masthead. Uh, Lagos, Kogi, Rivers lead as inflation hits 27.33%. Yes, the leads uh, in terms of um, um, inflation, food inflation, food inflation, yes, uh, the, these three states are leading. Uh, 177 deported Nigerians violated Saudi Arabia visa rules. That's what the embassy is saying. And FG reduces charges against Emir Fiele, strike stalls arraignment. And uh, so there was some strike in some parts of Nigeria. Uh, below the picture, LP welcomes articles of merger proposal, NNPP gives condition. And Navy arrest four stowaways uh, aboard a Dubai vessel. Hmm. And the Lagos state government dislodges arrests street traders in Oshodi and others. Big, big stories here on the front page of uh, the Punch newspaper. All right, Abib, let's get your perspective uh, to a few of this, uh, of this stories here. Uh, I, I think we have done justice to the conversation around them, the labor, uh, labor um, suspension of a strike. Um, let's look at a few concerns here, which borders on the inflation figures, which was released uh, just yesterday. Uh, here we, we hear government say that reform, reforms comes with pains, uh, but inevitable. That's what government is saying. 
Uh, we also are aware that um, Lagos, Kogi, and uh, one of the states um, have the highest uh, uh, figure in terms of food inflation. Inflation is about 27.33%. Very worrying statistics. 18 year high, uh, the feed, I mean, experts have put it. How, how does this come to you? Uh, I mean, there are fears that the figures will soon go up again, given to the yield tax spendings and uh, desire for food. Okay. All right. So talk to me a bit. Tell me how you think um, the inflation figures uh, would impact. Um, you know, you. Yes, let's start off with you as a case study. I wouldn't want to say Nigerians in general, but there is a major concern around Nigerians. High inflation, uh, the rise in the cost of living, the rise in the cost of, uh, of everything, food and all of that. How does this come to you, Abib? 27.33%. Can, can, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. I, I, I think you are raising a very main issue. We, um, you know, rising inflation and the consequent rise in the, in the price of goods and services. Mm. These are concerns of Nigerians. And now that you tie this few weeks' time, naturally, you expect prices of goods, prices of what we eat to be going up. And don't also forget that most Nigerians are concerned about what they put on the table, what they eat, you know. And I hope that the government is looking into this. I hope the government is addressing it. And I hope that something will be done to drastically reduce the prices of goods and services. Then uh, uh, there's another issue here that you like that you mentioned. The bickering between the two major parties in Nigeria. The ruling party, APC, and the PDP, on the issue of a one-party state. One-party state is not in any way beneficial to our democracy, to our development, and to our growth. It is, it is important for Nigeria to have op opposition parties that will put the government of the day on their toes. Nigeria should resist any attempt to make this country a one-party state. It's not good because when the, once the opposition is there, the opposition's duty is to be on the sideline, provide alternatives, make sure government of the day is doing the right thing, and campaign for the next election. That is how democracy, democracy survives. That is how development can be. And that is how Nigeria can be on the, on, the, on, the, on the path of growth and development. We must resist absolutely the idea of anybody to make Nigeria a one-party state. Then, don't forget that you read something in, in Punch, which is the fact that the fallout of this labor, of this strike, you said the maritime sector lost 20 billion naira. That is not good enough. But there are un unintended consequences of any strike action. And that's what we saw. So it will be expected that the organized public sector will lament. Then we are in Uyo for the editor's conference. And yesterday was the opening ceremony. The governor was there. The former governor of the state was there, Shiva Shoba. And uh, the publisher of Vanguard. Angusam was also there. Angusam was the chairman of the event. And some of the issues they raised was the importance of the media in checkmating the SSCs of government. The media role, as explicit in the constitution, making sure that government of the day and what they are doing, people are aware of what they are doing, and that the government of the day is held accountable for its policies and programs. You know, the governor of the state was very you know, articulate in telling us what he has done so far in the state. And we can see some of them, you know. And also that the president of Nigeria, even though they are not in the same party, the president has been playing the final role in making sure that things work, you know, effectively in uh, a crime of state. These are the issues, these are some of the issues. Then we also mentioned the issue of uh, Sawolu, you know, Sawolu as the appeal court as a uh, 
Okay. Afras, Confirmed. Confirmed. Validated is an election. Mm. You know, should be expected. Okay. We'll, 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 uh, did, we'll, did you say, uh, hello, Abu, did you say it should be expected? Is that what? The appeal court um, up, upholding um, Sawolu's election. You said it should be expected. Yes, yes. yes. No, first of all, I think it should be expected. You know, it should be expected because I, by and large, by and large, I think the government no won the election. That's my opinion. I'm a political reporter for more than 25 years. Yeah. Leave it. And I can tell you that based on that, based on what you saw, what is on ground, so we won the election. All right. But all the right. other parties also have a right. Yes. To go to court. Yes. Yeah, yes. All right. All right. Let's let's, let's 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 take some calls. Yeah. We'll come back to you. We are still on, on the matter. Yeah. We'll come back to you. Let's speak with Mazi Okora for. Oh, good morning, Mazi. Good morning, my brother Dave. Good morning, Nigeria. Good morning, I guess. Well, Mazi Okora for from ours. Well, our reflection this morning goes to the Book of Wisdom, seven twenty-two, which says, "For in wisdom there is a spirit that is intelligent." There is a spirit that is holy, there is a spirit that is unique, there is a spirit that is unpolluted, etc. Now we come back to the Nigerian factor, where the election has come and gone, but the question is that that apathy, what happened in the election, both to be, anyway we call it in Nigeria, is still shaking because I wonder what will happen in 2027. Mm. That is the question that. Now, thank God for somebody like uh, Ripagri that apologized about the thing, uh, the labor crisis that's going to happen. That is what we call wisdom. Now, the same workers should go back to You see, when we talk about wisdom, when we talk about intelligence, intelligence is not that question of when you go to university, you come back and come back and start remembering about the carry fire. No. You have seen what is happening now. Why can't you increase their own school fees? That is their own exam fee. Instead of 18,000 to 27,000 plus other accessories that will be around to something thousand from the schools. Now, not the local, the same thing. Not the who knows and jump, who knows. Now, the Nigerian government are not talking about the educational sector. They think that politics, politics, politics. And the education sector in Nigeria is still shaking. Many students cannot go back to school. I'm still saying it. The National Assembly members find a solution to it now or never. Mm. It's shaking, shaking, shaking. All right. Good morning. All right. Thank you. Good morning, Nigeria. Thank, thank, thank you, Marzi. Thank you so very much for your contribution. Let's keep the calls coming. Uh, we still have some time on this segment of the show. I mean, whilst we await the calls, we can also take a look at a few of the papers that we have left, and we can settle for an interruption when the calls come. Um, let's look at the Nigerian News Direct. Uh, major, major story here is on the Nigerian inflation uh, figures, which um, has it that inflation uh, rate um, hits 27.33% as food insecurity uh, deepens. Um, we also have a concern here. Court of Appeal affirms election of Samuelu Amzat. NSA arrest attackers of Ajero as labor list term six conditions to halt nationwide strike. NNPCL to inaugurate $2.8 billion AKK gas pipeline in December and many other stories. Let's speak with our caller. Uh, Uche from Abia is on the other side. Uche, good morning. Thank you for having me back. Speak to uh, us. I want us to, you know, I need a clarity, and many of us do, regard to 1,500 and 200 naira Udo. CBN is saying that there is still going to be a legal thing after this uh, year. Hmm. Whereas the Supreme Court, why I'm concerned is that the Supreme Court, the final court of the land, has said by December, at the end of the year. So I don't want us to find ourselves in a quagmire. Hmm. Hmm. We need more clarity. Hmm. Is it the word of the CBN or, or, or Supreme Court? God bless you, people. All right, thank you very much, Uche. I, I might not have response to that, but then let's speak with Ada uh, from Plateau again. Ada, good morning. Good morning, yes, I'm back again, Ada from Plateau State. Um, I want to talk about this. Um, it says a uh, reform come with things, but inevitable. It says empty. I agree with this assertion, but I disagree with the way the thing is going. The pain should be balanced. It's the masses that have been continuously asked to be patient, fighting the, uh, their uh, belt, while those at the helm are busy losing their belt. They are not ready to make a single sacrifice. They are no longer interested in some economic terms, such as inflation, double disease, floating the naira, the inflation hit to the 7.33%, and so on. What the masses, uh, what we are interested in is uh, being able to put food on our table. 
the worst things that can happen to any nation is food insecurity and education insecurity. David, can you believe that universities have been complaining that the resumption, um, I mean, they have having a no turn in resumption because of the charges, the high charges. And the same universities have put out a recent now that those that cannot meet up with the deadline, they have fined them. Some universities have fined them 10,000 naira. I don't know. We are just sitting on a keg of gunpowder that is waiting to explode. The National Assembly are keeping quiet there because they, they can afford to pay. They, 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 they have them pay no matter what the fee is. Even the children most of them are not even attending school here. Even those that are attending, are attending private universities. They are working. But this is a we get approached. Please cannot go back. Then you are not saying that those that, uh, that, that did not give the deadline. We have never had 10,000 naira. Some are even charging more than that. Where are we going from here? So the government should, should fix the thank you for that outburst uh, this morning i think it is imperative that we discuss these things uh, uh, there's a low resumption at the university and then the students that could not resume early because they could not pay their fees have been made to pay an extra Ten thousand naira for late late payment. I think uh, this whole, whole reforms and um, IGR drive uh, should carry a human face. Uh, should be a bit more human in the view of this uh, revenue drive that we are pursuing as a people, as a country, as organisations, as establishment, as state governments, and all of that. Let's keep the calls coming. We are almost running out of time on the on the segment of the show. I believe if you're still there, we have a few a few more papers. Let's run through them and then we can wrap up the segment of the show. Uh, this Nigeria will be our next stop. This Nigeria newspaper is our next stop. Uh, it leads with um, the NLC. Strike is over. NLC suspends industrial action, action after meeting uh, uh, with the NSA. Okay, a federal government. NSA Ribado confirms the rest of Emo uh, governor's aid over attack on Nigeria. And Oshiomele says no one can arrest democracy. All right, fantastic there. Uh, customs in Senate claims ignorance of um, $3.2 billion modernization project details. Uh, Tinubu opens the NGE conference, seeks cooperation to stimulate economy for foreign investment. And Saudi Arabia has given reasons for deportation or, or entry refusal or visa refusal uh, to Nigerians. And this one is on um, Lagos State Appellate Court dismisses LP. PDP's uh, appeal affirms so will lose a verdict. Big stories there on the front page of the, uh, this Nigerian newspaper. And then the last paper this morning is the Salient Times. Salient Times, um, pretty busy on the front page this morning, pretty busy. It kicks off with the NLC TUC uh, conversation as they suspend nationwide strike. And uh, this one says, Emo elders uh, Ajero meets over NLC leaders' rifts with state government. Details of FG's meeting with NLC TUC leadership are revealed. Okay. Um, below that is uh, some more pictures here. I've lost count of the number of women I've slept with. Okay, we're saying this. Uh, actor Don Little. Uh, what's the essence? of this. Now, husband kills uh, his 26-year-old wife for stabbing her 41 times in the neck with a screwdriver. Wow. Wow. This is not palatable. All right. Let's look further down. Uh, further up, rather. I, okay, uh, looking for more, more educative stories here uh, on the Portable fires manager over alleged misappropriation of funds. This is entertainment. And then you know, Abafumi a university lecturer slums, dies in his office. That is it. Uh, and many other stories you could find, you could find on the front page of the salient, salient times uh, newspaper. All right. I, I still have one interesting one here, which is the Sport Sports Extra. That will be our last uh, uh, paper this morning, the Punch Sports Extra. Major story here, on the march again, on the march again, Eagles begins 2026 World Cup uh, quest against um, crocodiles. Um, Nigeria versus Lesotho, 
the game is for today, later today, later on today, Thursday. All right, let's look at a few stories on the international scene. Uh, Teller upbeat uh, ahead of Eagles' debut. Uh, will face Eagles with winning mindset. That's less social speaking there. Uh, Pesero Omero back Uzo'o despite form. And a bit of rest of boxing here. WBC rank uh, uh, Ngano 10th uh, after Fury fight. Let's look at this one here. Oba, Obasogeza Eagles most, most in form. Obasoge, Eagles most informed keeper. Okay. OC men tops Chelsea's a January three man short list. And Arsenal can win EPL this season. Uh, you want to know he's speaking there. And United ponder uh, Casimiro's a, a sale. And there are many other stories you could find on the front page of this punch sports extra. Abib, do we still have you there? I know the network has been a little bit uh, funny this morning. I hope we still have a beat. Oh, yes, Habib, you are still there. Uh, I thought we had lost the network. Yeah. Yes. We, we really have to go now. Uh, it's, it's obvious that um, uh, the stories are all repeating itself on the papers this morning. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah. we don't yeah. seem to have so much um, fresh, fresh conversations here. But then, thank you so very much, Habib, for taking out your time. Uh, I know it was a lot of work to have you do this this morning, all the way from from Uyo. Yeah. I got you out of your, your sweet bed this morning to do this with Would us. You, anything for you, anything for you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I appreciate it, Ak yeah. Abib. Do have a great day and enjoy your session today at the at the, at yeah. the conference. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.